Hey, Full House fans. Okay, Even Stevens, Kim Possible, the Even Stevens movie. I was in that too, but we're not talking about me. We're talking about this week's Full House Rewind Rewind guest, Christy Carlson Romano. She does so many things, including starting Podco, the network that brings you Full House Rewind. You won't want to miss this episode of Full House Rewind with my guest, Christy Carlson Romano. And we're about to make a huge announcement about Full House Rewind coming up soon. We're back late this fall with a lot more new episodes and some huge guests that you would not believe are Full House fans. We'd like to thank you for listening wherever you get your podcasts and watching the show on our Full House Rewind YouTube channel. This is a Podco original. Do your kids watch you on shows? I'm okay with having played strong female characters. Mm -hmm. Kim Possible, Ren Stevens, mm -hmm. even Cadet Kelly. Can you tell us about some of the stuff that you've done to protect showbiz kids. I went to Barnard College at Columbia University. Mm. It took me 12 years to graduate. Can you do the Kim Possible voice for us? <laughs> Come on, just do it. Hey Dave, what's the sitch? Welcome to episode eight of Full House Rewind, also known as Jesse's Girl. I'm your host, Dave Coulier. Christy Carlson Romano is our guest on the show today, and, well, she's going to be joining us shortly. Episode 8 opens with a rainy thunderstorm in San Francisco. The house is dark, and Jesse almost clobbers Joey with a baseball bat in the living room, thinking that Joey is a prowler. The entire family gets woken up by the storm. Jesse tells the family that he's pretty upset with something Joey did. Jesse then recaps the story. The next scene is Jesse in the Pink Bunny room giving a guitar lesson to his new student, Karina. There's an obvious attraction and they end up spending the entire day together. Jesse is very smitten by his new student, Karina. Well, we flash forward and Jesse wants Joey to tell the family how he backstabbed him. Joey then recaps the story. Karina shows up for another guitar lesson and joins the family in the living room to watch The Wizard of Oz on TV. Well, the TV malfunctions just as the movie is about to start, but Joey saves the day by reenacting the entire Wizard of Oz movie, a bit that he just happens to do in his stand-up act. Well, Danny puts the girls to bed as Joey and Karina get to know each other in the living room. Joey tells Karina that he's single. Karina asks Joey if he'd like to go out with her sometime. She reveals that there was nothing special between her and Jesse. Well, Karina and Joey are kissing in the kitchen as Jesse arrives and catches them. We discover that both Jesse and Joey are in love with Karina. Danny talks to Jesse and Joey about the virtues of falling in love. Karina returns to the Tanner house and apologizes. Well, Jesse takes the high road, forgives Joey, and Karina and Joey share a hug and a kiss at the front door. Stephanie and DJ say, ew, from the stairs, and we all say goodnight. We'd like to hear what you think about episode eight, so send us an email at fullhouserewind at podco.us. And with that, let's get on with the show. You've got messages. Oh, time to check our messages. Uh, hey, Dave, it's me, Kermit the Frog. I watched episode 8, and it kind of reminds me of when Fozzie had eyes for Miss Piggy. Uh, Kermit? Uh, what is it, Fozzie? I already apologized for that. I know, Fozzie. Apology accepted. You see, Piggy is very beautiful, so I understand why anyone, including bears, can't take their eyes off of her. Oh, Kermit, I love you for saying I'm beautiful. Now back off, Fozzie, you crumb! Ah, uh, sorry. Anyway, Dave, I just want to say that love is a powerful thing. And we could use a lot more of it nowadays, because life is short. Especially if you're a frog like me. Because, well, time flies. In fact, time's fun when you're having flies. Okay, I'll talk to you later. Bye. Wow. Thank you, Kermit. That's great advice for everybody. A lot more love in the world. And you know what? 
you're going to love our special guest on the show today. I have a very interesting connection with our special guest. I first met Christy Carlson Romano in 2003 when I was guest starring on the Even Stevens movie. I played a character named Lance LeBeau, who was kind of a huckster. I think Christy was about 19 years old when we met. She's an Emmy-nominated actress, entrepreneur, content creator, host, activist, and a Disney icon. You know her from Disney's Kim Possible and Even Stevens, and you should check out her podcast, Vulnerable. She and her husband, Brendan, started Podco, which produces this very show. And there's, well, there's a lot more we're going to talk about. Here's a pic of Christy when Full House was on the air. Please welcome to Full House Rewind, Christy Carlson Romano. How are you? I am so honored to be here. Well, we've known each other an awful long time. We really have. Since since you were a teenager. Well, yeah, and that was a very long time ago. So was it? It doesn't well, look like it. Okay, thank you. It doesn't look like it. But you were you were born born uh, burned. Yep. You were burned. And I was burned. burned. You were born <laughs> in uh, 1984, and Full House started in 1987. Truth. So mm -hmm. you watched the show when you were a little girl, right? I watched it. Well, so when, when I was reviewing this episode that we're going to talk about today, Jesse's Girl, right? Um, I looked at Jodi Sweeten, and we're roughly about the same age, I believe. Are you? Because, yeah, she, um, she, she was four years old in 1987 when we first started Full House. So she's either a year old, so older. So probably a year older than you. Yeah, yeah I'm 39. You would, been, you would have been, yeah, yeah, she, yeah. So, that's, so I looked at her, right? And yeah. I didn't start the business till I was six and a half. Jo wow, why did you wait so long? I mean, I, mean, I, was, I waited I was, until I was six and a half before I got into the business. I was slacking. I was, because <laughs> there was the, there were Jodies out there. You know, there were those folks that were kind of destined to, to be out in California. You know, she's, I love her so much. Yeah. We've, she we've become friendly over the years, you know, and um, when I watched this, I really remember seeing the show like and I was her age. You know what I mean? Yeah. So that's and she my she could nail a comedic line like an actress in her 30s. It was such a freak thing when we first started working with Jody. Her timing was like Shirley Temple, like uh -huh. Shirley Temple esque. like, wow, where did this what planet is this kid from, you know? Because to have timing, she would memorize everybody's lines. Mm -hmm. So if you'd miss a line, she'd go, Dave, that's your line. <laughs> I'm like, oh, <laughs> sorry, Jody, I forgot. Well, you and your husband, uh, Brendan, who I just, our friendship has just immediately blossomed. He's good. such a great guy. Just a <laughs> good, you. good, solid guy, you know. He's okay. Um, yeah, but he's just a good, <laughs> solid, my type of guy. Oh, you I know? love that. So you have two kids together. Yes. And what age are your kids? Six and four. Six and four. Yeah. Now, do your kids watch you on shows? Like, because my son, Luke, is now 32 years old. Okay. And he watched me growing up. And oh. he used to call Full House Daddy's Show. So can I watch Daddy's Show? Yeah. What, do your kids watch you? Increasingly so. You yeah. know, I am, I'm identifying these days more as a business person and content creator, um, which I think is a wonderful thing because yeah. I think there's there's so many avenues of what that means today. It's not just take a selfie, you know, try to make some money with it. It's not like that. Yeah. And so my girls have a relationship to YouTube, specifically YouTube kids that feels, uh, you know, we obviously limit it, but they have an understanding of like what I do, what, what my husband does in sort of a macro sense. Whereas I think, you know, some kids have relationships to their celebrity parents um, and they're like, oh, I can place them there at, at seven o'clock on Thursday. And like, right. I know that when I go to school the next day, we're going to, you know, someone's going to bring it up or sure. something like that. So yeah. we don't have that kind of life because we're, we're living in a, a streaming society now. Yeah. Yeah. It's a, it's a, certainly a different world, not just your generation, but my generation is really, it's, the world has evolved into such a different place. You know, just the way that you get your entertainment now, everything's kind of a la carte, you know, you can stream, you can binge shows. It wasn't even when you were doing Even Stevens, I mean, you had to wait for your show to come on that particular time on that particular network, right? Right. And I think that
night at eight o'clock, you That's know? so sweet. So it's, it's a different world, it's evolved. So I was just, you know, I was curious about if your kids watch you and what their perspective is when they see you in reruns or in syndication and, yeah. you know. It's developing because, you know, I won't show them everything I've done, right? Mm -hmm. Like some of the stuff is, is more tween demographic for right. Disney Channel sure. that I did. Mm -hmm. yep. um, even Kim Possible, there's, there's, you know, certain things of action that feel a little... Um, a little older than than you know four and six. Um, I think I'm very selective of of what I I show them. I'm pretty selective. We're going to talk about Kim Possible, but you <laughs> okay. waited until you were six and a half years old. You started on Broadway, right? Hey, I'm triple vested, okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but you started on Broadway, right? You were Belle? Uh, well, no, that was when I was after Disney at 18 years old. Oh, okay. But when I did start on Broadway, however, um, I I started prior to Disney. I was sort of a Broadway kid. Right. I was literally part of a repertory company called Broadway Kids, where kids who had been on Broadway, um, so like the Ashley Tisdale, um, trying to think who else, we had some really significant alum uh, that would be you know, be not working. So they would hop in and we would do these like off-Broadway productions, kind of like Kids Bop. Have you heard of Kids yeah, Bop? Yeah, oh, absolutely. I know Kids Bop. So yes. that was what we were. We were like yeah. Kids Bop 1.0 yeah. with like a Broadway slant. And so there were records that came out of it and everything. And so I was kind of like also starting to do more indie films in the New York space. Mm -hmm. So I did like a Woody Allen movie. Right. Uh, and so I, I remember getting, um, you know, Parade, which is currently just won a Tony Award for like Best Revival this mm -hmm. year. And it was a very serious production. And when that was done, they gave us severance pay because it closed early. And we went out to L.A., stayed at the Oakwood. Ooh, the Oakwood. <laughs> That's like the divorcee manor, isn't it? That's where all the divorced <laughs> people end up, like the Oakwoods. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The, well, yeah. them and then, of course, like the dance moms and stage yep, parents. Right, right, yeah. It's like, you know, we used Divorcees to- Divorcees and dance moms. What that's could go all, wrong? Yeah, that's right. That's where they're hooking up at the <laughs> Exactly, Oakwood. oh yeah. my gosh. So basically, um, you know, we were there and I booked, it was called Spivey's Kid Brother at the time. Yeah. And I, uh, I had no idea what it was like to be a Disney kid. And that really wasn't, it was, we saw the Mouseketeers, but that had mm -hmm. been like, I want to say t almost 10 years before when- our shows got greenlit. So it was a very different, um, you know, programming slate. It was single camera. Right, you know, we right. eventually had Dennis and, you know, Dennis Mark. who talks like this, Dennis Rensler, how are you? It's scary Good accurate. I can't, how scary accurate. No, here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna, <laughs> we're gonna go back to the very beginning if we could do that. Yeah. I can't, yeah. with, if people knew how good you are on Voices, <laughs> it's scary accurate. <laughs> well, I wanna, I wanna talk about, you know, kids and kids actors, okay. you know, kids being actors. Um, a big thank you to Lumen for sponsoring this episode. What's a Lumen? Well, Lumen is the world's first handheld metabolic coach. And this little guy right here, it'll measure your metabolism just by breathing into it. Then you look at the Lumen app on your phone and it lets you know if you're burning fat or carbs. And then it guides you to improve your nutrition, your workouts, sleep, even stress management. Sounds simple, right? Well, all you have to do is breathe into your lumen first thing in the morning, and you'll know what's going on with your metabolism, whether you're burning fat or carbs. Then lumen gives you a personalized nutrition plan for that day based on your measurements. From what I know, metabolism is at the center of everything your body does. Great metabolic health will give you a bunch of benefits, including easier weight management, improved energy levels, better fitness results, better sleep, and who doesn't want that, right? So if you want to see something amazing and take your next step in improving your health, go to lumen.me slash full house to get 15% off your lumen. That is L-U-M-E-N dot me slash full house for 15% off your purchase. Okay, now go out there and be metabolically healthy. I've never said that before. First, I've got a bunch of questions about this, but first, was there, being a Disney kid, was there a Disney protocol that you kind of had to live up to? Was there kind of a code? I'm sh Well, actually, I'm curious if you guys had that as well, because there was a, a sense of wholesomeness, if that's the right. word mm -hmm. I'm able to use. Sure. Um, it, it's what was perceived as wholesomeness at the time, let's put it that way. And so it was like, we had a morals clause in mm -hmm. our contract. Right, yeah. But when you think about it, I don't know how you can make a minor adhere to a morality clause. Right, right. But the people that were the executives, they generally kind of tried to gently 
mentor you. Right. And right. be like, you know, I remember showing up to a, a, a press event and um, I had a little bit of my midriff exposed. And I was mm -hmm. basically like, like, maybe you want to, you know, think about that next time. Right, right. <laughs> And I was like, you know what? I get it. You know what I'm saying? Like I'm I'm doing a charity dancing with the stars in Austin, Texas, where I live. And I I it, it's it's you know it's a charity that concerns protecting children and mm -hmm. um, protective custody and stuff like that. And it's like I gave them what I perceived was just a, a nice headshot of me. Right. And they asked me, Christy, could you give us a different headshot? Hmm. And I was like, oh. I'm now perceiving it through the lens of somebody trying to protect right, children right, right. and the images that they mm -hmm. see. Absolutely. So I gave them, of course, a much more, I guess, less what they call yassified, yeah. <laughs> like very sassy. You know, I thought it was just, I thought I looked good, but I gave them a more like wholesome, wholesome thing. Yeah. You got to protect that image, you know, it's, it it's, is really interesting is. when we talk yeah. about this image, right? But, when you think about it being a trickle down, okay, sure, is when the kids have the kind of image that's positive. What I have found is that I'm okay with having played, you know, strong female characters, mm -hmm. Kim Possible, Ren Stevens, yeah. even Cadet Kelly. You know, these are some people consider them iconic millennial moments, and so I think that legacy is something. I'm grateful for it because there's been times in my life when I was a little confused about which way to go. And in the back of my mind, those characters lived in me. Mm -hmm. So in sure. some ways, yeah. those characters kind of really did help me. Through yeah, they shape your life. Yeah. They really do. Yeah. It's, it's amazing because it's such an involved process, the work that, you know, you're doing. And, you know, you were a kid actor and I saw all the kids, you know, I worked with all the Full House kids. Yeah. And I knew that it was really tough for them. Mm -hmm. After they would leave Full House, it was tough. They'd have to go to school, and they were made fun of sometimes. And, oh, no. you know, they, you know, I want names were and called numbers. names and stuff. <laughs> yeah. But were you, did you feel protective I know, like that? Oh, absolutely. We all did. Me, John, and Bob, we all felt very protective of the girls. I'm sure. And, and all the kids that we worked with on the show. But I know that it wasn't that easy for you at times. No, you not know. at all. <laughs> and, and, and I know that. And... So what advice would you give yourself as a kid now that you're an adult and you have kids? What advice would you give to young Christy Carlson Romano if you could do it all over again? Well, I kind of am able to kind of reparent myself through seeing mm -hmm. my two daughters. Yeah. And my yeah. oldest is the age that I started to professionally act. Mm -hmm. And so it is a bit triggering. Yeah, And sure. I think... I think after a while you become numb to so much. And I think that's why you yeah. see child actors go through um, experimentation phases, identity crises, sometimes addiction patterns. And so, you know, you're, you're, you're trying to find yourself in all these different ways. Um, and it's, and of course this growth is, is, is not linear. Mm -hmm. um, having yeah. like a typical childhood proves to be a lot more linear, I would say. Yeah, and I've heard that saying, you know, it's never too late to have a happy childhood, you know, which I just love that. It just resonates from working with the Full House kids and people that I know that have had tough childhoods, mm -hmm. you know, and through, you know, Full House Rewind, we've been hearing from all of these people just how much Full House has impacted. Well, I won't say impacted. It's enhanced their life in a very positive way. Kids who had tough childhoods and, you know, they would say Full House was my family. And yeah. I always knew that I could watch Full House on a Friday night and I would feel safe and secure there and you guys were my family. And um, you realize at some point that the work that you're doing in this little studio somewhere goes out somewhere. And it becomes video comfort food for an entire generation, which to me is mind blowing, you know? And, and so, you know, I have all these questions to ask you because I know you've gone through it as a work process and a life process, right. you know? So when I ask you, you know, what advice would you give to yourself? That to me is a very- <laughs> I didn't mean to dodge you know, the answer. No, 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 no. <laughs> and, and I don't want these to be hard hitting They're questions. They're not hard hitting. They're but, beautiful questions. But, but I want to unpack. ask you questions that, uh -huh. you know, are a little bit off the beaten path just because I'm interested because I've been through a, a very similar process, but I was an adult. Mm. But I got to see those kids 
firsthand. And I know you've been an, a very active voice, you know, protecting children in the entertainment industry. And that to me, I think is such a wonderful thing that you've been such a positive advocate for that. Can you tell us about some of the stuff that you've done to protect showbiz kids? Of course. Yeah, because um, I love that. I think that now that I have sort of re relinquished this idea of controlling my career in front of the camera, mm -hmm, right. um, so much of, I think, <clears throat> my identity crisis through my 20s was f trying to find a sense of control and empowerment. Right. Um, and, you know, since becoming a mom, I feel like I've, I've really truly found the pacing of that. Um, and ultimately, I've created a platform with one of my podcasts um, with the support of my husband, who's always encouraging me to speak up. And, you know, I, I tell this story because, you know, my husband's a former Marine and uh, we would try to sort of like compare trauma stories sometimes when we yeah. first started dating. And like, that's like a, <laughs> it's sort of like a, a, a sick way to flirt. But <laughs> ideally we were also kind of bonding over the fact that we were, we were looking for um, a happy ending and we found it together. Mm -hmm. And so he would tell me things like, you know, you're not unique and you know, your, your issues, like there's lots of people around the world that are starving. And like, I never thought of things that way. I thought mm -hmm. of, I thought very much in terms of like, is my agent going to call me and what, you know, should I be ashamed that I'm not getting callbacks or stuff like that? Right, so right. my, 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 my lens felt very two dimensional and, um, you know, I had gone to college, but I kept being, it was like the godfather, like they keep pulling me back in. So What's that like going to college? Cause <laughs> I didn't go to college. You didn't I, need I, to. I couldn't find a parking spot. You know, I drove around <laughs> that first day and I thought, well, maybe it's not for me, but it's, go, I'm sorry. Go ahead. It's insane. Yeah. It, it's, it's truly insane to be like an 18 year old who's, you know, the star of some kid show and, go, and shows up to an Ivy league school living in the dorms. I think that was one of the things I would tell and, young and Christy. And where'd you go to school? I, I went to Barnard College at Columbia University. Mm. It took me 12 years to graduate. <laughs> and I that met is, my husband. That's quite a degree. <laughs> that is, Yes, yeah. I'm a doctor of, I'll figure it out. Oh, okay. PhD, okay. MD. You have a lot of patience. <laughs> 12 years. I love sorry, it. I sorry. love that. <laughs> So yeah, I mean, in, in general, it, it took me a long time to understand that there was a, a, a very large world outside of me. And like what you were saying, your fans and the fandom anchoring you to something deeper. Mm -hmm. yeah. I've now tried to begin to have a conversation with my platform. Um, so if it's vulnerable, I've created a coalition landing page where it's like the Coalition for Child Performers, mm -hmm. um, which is dedicated to collecting um, you know, people's emails at the, at the moment, because I literally created it myself. <laughs> and it's, I, I speak with folks that are like Alison Stoner, who's an actress, a Disney actress, and, um, will be coming out with, uh, something that I'm not really able to talk about, but it'll be a, a creative piece that talks about the toddler to, um, what is it? Toddler to train wreck pipeline. Wow. That's what she's. That's, yeah. There's so many different thoughts I have <laughs> about that. That could go so many different directions. There's well, a lot of you, things basically that I'm doing behind the scenes. So like, mm -hmm. yes, I'm very vocal about it. I'll post some content about it. People will start to talk about it. But, uh, you know, there's only so much that can be said. Um, and then, you know, certain things need to start happening. Yeah. Yeah. Well, th change. this goes back to the early 1900s, by the way. Jackie Coogan was a child actor who was discovered by Charlie Chaplin. And uh, the Jackie Coogan law was established uh, to protect child actors' earnings, I think. Correct. Which you can keep 15% of it. 30. Is it 30 now? I, I, I thought it was 30% um, yeah, goes think, away. And they can access it when they're 18, yeah. right? Yeah. Because I was very aware of that, you know, with Mary Kate and Ashley and Candace and, and Jody, like, what's going on here? You know, like, are their parents in control? Because it gets to be... Because you've heard these things, like with Gary Coleman, you know, like mm. his parents stole all his money. Mm -hmm. um, unlike California, though, there's still 17 states that have no specific laws for horrible? this. And by the way, there's so many different productions. It, yeah, because it bounces everywhere from Canada to all of a sudden Nashville to Memphis to Florida to wherever. Yeah. 
Are you surprised that there's not more legislation to fix this stuff? I'm shocked. It's kids. I'm shocked that there's probably more protocol to protect the mental health of animals yeah. on sets than yeah. there are children and babies. ASPCA and... Well, yeah, and if you've ever... Yeah. And I'm sure you guys had plenty of animals. Um, yeah, whether it's Peter or whoever it is that's right. lobbying for that change to happen on every single you know, set, um, it's it's not being done because they assume that the parents will be the fail safe. They assume that the studio teachers will be the fail safe, all yeah. the while lobbying for more work time and, um, you know, all sorts of things that you hear about. So. Well, let's talk about some fun stuff. Right? I, I mean, talk I would love to. Yeah, let's talk, <laughs> let's talk about your, your sitcom, Even Stevens, which was a oh. huge hit for Disney. Take us through the audition process. I'm sure our, our listeners and and viewers would like to know, what's the audition process? How does how do you get to even Stevens? Like, do you get a call? Like, I know what my experiences have been, but take us through yours. So even Stevens was single cam, but it had sort of like a, a sitcom vibe to it. Uh, we we pulled our humor pulled very much from the Full House uh, cloth. Very much your character um, mm -hmm. was an uh, inspiration for. Shia LaBeouf's character. I didn't know that. Louis Stevens. I didn't know that. And and Kramer as well. It was oh, like a okay. part of that. His he had like a Kramer picture on his wall. Right. How that got right. cleared by you know S and P. <laughs> I have no idea. Yeah. Um. But he he wanted to be a comedian. His character, and so he would do Groucho Marx bits and like all sorts of fun yeah. things. Yeah. And um, eventually, after the pilot, they decided they wanted the sister to be more a part of it because their demo was a lot of young girls. Basically. Right, sure, yeah. And so my character became, you know, we it was an A and a B split because also that was better for child labor. <laughs> <laughs> of course, yeah. But but it was it was it was lovely to to be able to and have You were 19? No, I started was, at 14. 14. I met you when pilot. you were 19. Yes, you met right. me right before I left. Because but we I was 18. 18? Or even 17 and a half. Oh, okay. Yes. I thought you were you were Carried yourself like a 19-year-old. I did. It was all that I mean, theater. even though you're 17, you're <laughs> like, wow, she's got to be 19. Oh, yeah. But we did the Thank Even you. Stevens movie together, and I yes. played kind of a huckster. I forget what my oh, character's name Oh, my God. Name you, was. you literally came out in the last scene out of a helicopter. A helicopter. I was you in a helicopter. You did a whole stunt. Yeah. I'll never forget it. Yeah. It was one scene, and I was like, uh, okay, I got to go in a helicopter. Okay. <laughs> you like, uh, Mark and Dennis must have yeah. really, you must have owed okay, them you're going to go in a helicopter. Dave's in the helicopter. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. Mark I, and Dennis. I, shout out to, to Mark and Dennis, because you know they'll watch this. They're yeah. very supportive. Yeah. And everybody loved, I used to do that Dennis Rinsler uh, impression <laughs> for the Full House folks. But you know what? I, I, I love doing voices. You know, I always have. And so good. Uh, you do too. I mean, you've worked on a ton of animated shows, right? Kim I, Possible. And, yeah. and uh, can you do the Kim Possible voice for us? Come on. just. Do <laughs> hey, Dave, what's the sitch? See, people love that. I know. Look at lines are, as they lines say, are blowing lines up. Lines are blowing up right Please now. Please stand by. It's the Kim Possible <laughs> voice. Um, I'll do your voicemail. Do you, do you just love, you did a lot of episodes too, right? Like, well, yeah, we, we were one of those, you know, Disney had this policy of three seasons yeah. and then that was for international syndication. And then mm -hmm. if you were a hit, they would literally beg you to come back for one more season. And right. that's in the case of Kim Possible that happened. Yeah. And um, so we ended up getting four seasons and, you know, people. It was a big show. I mean, why wouldn't you want to keep that show going? You well, know? what's so strange to me is that it didn't have more um, because, you know, it wasn't like any was, anyone was aging out. Yeah. And we had we had outfitted our voices to an Epcot ride. So there was interactive elements with a remote communicator. That was her little beep boop thing. Yeah. And it would it would let things know and they would come out of the Epcot walls in like different countries. So I was like, well, Kim's got to be here to stay, but... They, I think they were moving very fast towards uh, diversifying their animation. And Kim was the first hybridized TV show with Walt Disney Studios and Disney Channel. Mm. So it was a big deal. It was that big, was it the big ABC Disney merger at the time? Was that it, it, I think was it happening? was around that yeah, time. Yeah. yeah, because when we were doing Full House, Disney bought ABC. Yeah. And so we were under the Disney what was that like? Umbrella. 
Nothing changed. Okay. Nothing changed. And then we came back and did Fuller House, and we were back at Warner Brothers on the same stage, 24, where we shot Full House. Oh, smart. Which was crazy. Yeah. You know, and I remember seeing the set being built, and I walked in and I cried. It was so emotional. I was like, uh, they say you can never go home again. We're back home. Aww. You know? Crazy. Do you love doing cartoon voices? It's fun, isn't it? Of course. I yeah. mean, I'm not as uh, talented as you, but oh, I... Oh, no. <laughs> see, the check cleared. The check cleared. See? Yeah. But honestly, I, I I do have so much love for the voiceover community. I recently just finished a, a different podcast um, called I Hear Voices with Will Friedle. Oh, yeah, yeah. Will from, you know, Boy Meets World. And right, right. Um, he, he has a similar story where he went to Girl Meets World and they saw the set as well and they all cried. Yeah. It must be it's, so it was, beautiful. It was emo just sitting here, you know, yeah. with like, you know, uh, that's not the real mannequin, but, you know, just sitting here <laughs> and seeing the color of that chair, you know. Oh, like, yeah. I first, I first walked in and it was, uh, it was like, wow, this is really fun. This is really cool. And cool. seeing these crazy little Joey Gladstone action figures is Get just like. Get out of here. I know. They hit Cut it out, there. Dave. I know. I know. It's crazy. <laughs> it's, it's, it's actually crazy. And, and we were crazy when you were the moderator for <gasps> 90s oh, con we were in you're Hartford. too sweet you're too sweet you were so good and so well you were patient with us because whenever the full house cast gets together we're a little <laughs> nutty we, we it's just all the old jokes kick in and i loved it and we can be really silly you must have just thought we were nuts do you know what they did to me what so do you want to set it up what tell what 90s con is of course okay set set it up you guys went back too recently right we did okay. yeah yeah so the girls um i got called about i don't know now it's like a year and a half or two years ago and they these these two ladies at the time they called me they said hey you know would you be interested in in being our moderator for right all of our panels didn't realize what i was signing up for but it was fantastic because i was the right age i was the face of the fans for this thing called 90s con yeah and that was the first inaugural one that they were doing yeah. and i was so excited to be like the first and that was during covid wasn't it wasn't it was it? like right after right after not that yeah it's done but it's right. just like it was yeah. when things were opening up enough for right. us to do it right. um so what happened was is i was doing all my panels you know i had a backstreet boys panel and i had a uh you know um whatever they called, uh, Hocus Pocus and all these amazing, wonderful powerhouse casts that yeah. all brought their own energy. Yeah. In fact, I had Nev Campbell on uh, with the Party of Five one and she had never really done a panel before like that. Right. Um, I also had like Christopher Lloyd and um, for the back. Okay, <laughs> that's okay. Where's the telestrator? It, that was exactly yeah. his. That was he didn't, he didn't really know what was going on. <laughs> so to be, a, to be a panel moderator with a person who's, Otherwise, his energy wasn't there. I was, I was really just trying to live in the moment and be present with you guys. So you guys came on backstage, and I was, of course, trying to get all the content because I'm a big content person. <laughs> right. Everything is content. Yes. Um, but I, but I also wanted to be respectful in that I didn't really know anybody. I, you guys were so sweet. I think you were one of my first pictures I posted because I was so excited. And they tell me this big guy, this muscly guy who's like your security, comes up to me. He goes, so. It's an hour long panel. And I had all these questions for you guys. Yeah. <laughs> so they only have 30 minutes. And Is I was like, said to yes. You? Really? He told me this right before you guys went Why on. Did we only have 30 minutes. I, I, don't I know. think you were, okay, so you guys had outsold your photo s sessions. And it was like so many people wanted to come and see you. And you guys were taking time oh. with all of your fans and, and that you needed to go back to do See, we that. never know what's going on. That's better. We it's never better. know what's going on. We're just like, go over there. Okay, great. Yeah. Sign this. All right. <laughs> sounds good. They shake a rattle. Like, yeah, come here, actor. Much. Like, <laughs> Okay. Sounds good. I'll be there. Exactly. Is there is there free food? I will be there. So you only moderated, so us, it was 30, uh, moderated us for 30 minutes? 30 minutes. So I was really impressed that you enjoyed that time because... I was so surgical with the 30 minutes I had with you guys that yeah. it felt like it went very fast. Yeah. And I don't remember, but I do think we took some, we were able to take some questions from the audience. We did. Okay, good. Yeah, we did. That's I get important. them confused because I've done two of those in Hartford and then I did one, uh, it was actually the last time I saw Bob. Me, John, oh. and Bob were in Orlando. Okay. And That uh, was the before three of that. Us, yeah, and that was during COVID where they had to have plexiglass mm. and, you know, fans could like lean against the plexiglass. It was, it was, it was weird. I was not. It was weird. I, they told me, do not ask questions about Bob. 
Oh, really? Yeah, they had said that because it was the first appearance you guys had done. Yeah, but, you know, uh, we love getting questions about Bob because for us it keeps him his spirit alive, and we talk about him on this show all the time. Good. Just how nutty and crazy and lovable he was, and we yeah. give a, a Tanner family hug at the end of every episode. So you know, and we kind of dedicate that to Bob because he was a hugger in real life, not just Danny Tanner, but Bob was a hugger yeah. in real life, you know. Yeah. So did we behave for you? Were we okay? You were, you, it wasn't you. It was oh. it was just the way that those, you know, that that was me sort of learning how to be a host, a live host, right? Because, uh, yeah. I mean, you're a comedian. I could never imagine being live and funny. It's just me live either. and cute. I, ca I can't either. So that's why we're, that's why we're taping all of this. Yeah. <laughs> We've cut everything. Um, you and your husband... Brendan. Yeah. And I've already said, I, I just uh, think he's a really solid guy. I really like him a you lot. You know, I'll he's keep been him. So, you know, you should keep him. <laughs> you know, uh, he's been so great to work with here at Podco. And you guys started this company together. Right. How? Oh, wow. How? I want to know, I want to know what is the genesis to where, because now we're a show. And it, you know, happens to have come from, you know, 50% from your brain. So, how did how did we get here? Well, first of all, I just want to say how honored Podco is to have you as a a, a signature part of our family. Um, the check cleared again. <laughs> check cleared. Yeah. Let's hope so. <laughs> <laughs> but honestly, Podco's um, I learned a thing or two working with Disney about synergy, mm -hmm. and um, I kind of schooled Brendan over the years about you know why my brand was you know such a legacy brand and I didn't really truly understand it until I started doing comic cons mm. and people would come up yeah. to me and they're like, you know, you, like you said, you impacted my life so much and you were my family. The common, the common phrase that I'm sure you also hear is you were my childhood. Yeah. That exact phrase. It's amazing. There were people that saw themselves in me and where I was at in my life in a really positive way. Well, the connection for this is my wife, Melissa, and uh, you guys have connected on your show, Vulnerable, right? Oh, yeah. Was it on Vulnerable? It was on Vulnerable. Yes, and she was a guest. Yeah. And she just adores you. Aww. And and it was that connection that brought us together with Podco. Uh -huh. And then I started talking to your husband, Brennan. And uh, this show that we're doing is kind of, it's, it's, um, it's kind of like do, almost doing a little sitcom, yeah. You know, because we have so many things going on with you know Mr. Woodchuck and Comet and Granny. I've yet Tandy to see our, any of these elements, characters. sir. Well, they you have to watch your episode <laughs> oh, because all that stuff happens. It's popping in. You. Oh, that's yes, so exciting. Yes, absolutely. So when I pitched this idea, you know, they got it immediately um, because he and us, you know, Cal and and our producer Dylan, they're you know they think visually. Yeah. And I said, if I'm going to do a show, I want it to be I wanted to kind of have the feel of Full House, which is kind of a very Full House Ted Lasso kind of feel. You know, you just want to be positive. And I said, I want it to be very visual. Yeah. So I want characters around us that enhance the show. And they just got it immediately. So this is kind of a hybrid podcast. <laughs> uh, it's a little different. We're kind of in the foray of, of covering new ground here with this show. But Are you having fun so far? I'm having so much fun. Okay. And our guests. That's what I care about. Our guests have been just wonderful. And I love being, you know, it, I'm, you know, honored that I get to sit in this chair and represent a show like Full House, the way that we're doing it. So it's, it's a blast. Um, and... You you are so busy with so many things. I mean, you you just told me like you're traveling here and you went here and you oh. went there and you're here doing this. We and you're would, going somewhere. Else. Dave and I, so is Brennan. I mean, he's all over the map. Like, yeah. where did he go? He's gone again. I, I don't, like, yeah, he's gone. Maybe crazy. he'll come back. I don't know. You guys I'll are busy. see him in Texas. And you got your kids. We have two children that in, we in we Austin. love and adore, and we're yeah. very hands on parents. And yeah. um, you know, we live in in Austin for to have a certain quality of life with them. That's. Mostly just, uh, I wouldn't say slower, but um, we're very happy there. You yeah. know, I, I lived here for a very long time, and yeah. I, I have such a, re a sense of relief that I can I can leave work here. Yeah. We're in L.A., by the way, so that's where we're, we're in San Francisco. What no, are you talking about? We we're are, in uh, the, the well, basement of yes, uh, <laughs> yes. Let's say San Francisco, but we we shoot our show here in Los Angeles. Yeah, and I don't get to come here very often anymore. Mm -hmm. um, after we wrapped Fuller House. Um, you know, I really, we moved to Michigan, Melissa and I were building a home there Yeah, and it is, it, there is a certain comfort being in a, 
I won't say a smaller place because Austin isn't a smaller, you know, it's not a small town. Right. I mean, it's a, it's a bustling, wonderful city. Mm -hmm. uh, I've been there a bunch of times. But there is something when you find your, your comfort zone, it, it feels different. Yeah, um, I think we clicked into some sort of frequency there. And I'm not, you know, hippy dippy like that these days, but I, I, I feel that. Because you're, you're an East Coaster. I'm a Yankee. Right? I mean, I so, grew up thinking that the South was, you know, ass backward. Yeah. And um, I. We say back ass word oh, on this show. Back yeah. ass word. We say back ass. Can, I was, you can bleep yeah. all of that out, right? Because yeah. we're family yeah. friendly. Yeah. Well, we'll show a picture of a donkey. <laughs> You know, and that'll say, well, wait, it was in the Bible. Uh -huh. Ass was in the Bible, you know. <laughs> so that's that's how we get around it. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. So, yeah, I mean, I grew up thinking that, thinking, gosh, if I could see myself now, like yeah. I'm living deep in the heart of Texas. Yeah. And I've got, <laughs> Yeah. you got to do yeah. that every time, yep. you know, celebrating Texas Day with my girls and, you know, thinking about going to rodeos. And I just, I'm here for it. I'm, I'm, I'm in such a good place since moving to Austin, um, and you know, I'm, I'm, you know, I think I'm about seven and a half years sober now. Yeah, I'm so happy with what that choice has offered me over the years. It just keeps getting better. So, mm -hmm. so yeah, I mean, I'm just living in gratitude, um, and I'm trying to learn more and more about how to be a better host, how to, you know, serve Podco better, how to be more of um, sort of a, a network executive in some ways. It's mm -hmm. so strange, but. Yeah. Once you can click into the positivity, like you're saying, using this platform to, to give the positivity back to your fans, yeah. it's going to create a momentum in everyone, the people that are observing this and yeah. you yourself. Because yeah. there's plenty of things that will polarize us out there, you know, but there's not a lot <laughs> of things mean, that are, there's not a lot of things that will bring us together, you know, so mm. you're a delightful guest. I, I am, am I could, done? I could ask you so many questions. You're not done. yet. <laughs> okay, good. Before you go, we get to do one more thing that's, that's, that's it? really fun. We didn't even talk about Jesse's girl. Well, but but well, we do. We <laughs> okay. do in the episode. We build around it. We talk about oh, what happens cool. in the episode. But we let you shine. Oh, well, that's See? sweet. We Can I ask you, you a question about Jesse's girl? Absolutely. Two watches, Dave. So I had two watches in the beginnings of, of Full House. And the mannequin on the show would always... I insisted that it would always wear the same outfit as me which drove <laughs> everyone nuts and they're like why would you do that and i said i don't know it's a weird character quirk so i would wear two watches and the mannequin had to have two watches but those are the little things that you catch up on and then you say it was weird i loved your character so much Thank, well th i loved playing that character you know it was uh it was an extension of me and all the stand-up that I was doing in the day, and and the producers were really generous, letting me do all these crazy voices and characters and stuff. Yeah. So for me, showing up at Full House at Warner Brothers was like a giant toy box for me. Yeah, it was like, oh my gosh, I can have those props and I can do <gasps> this, right. and I can, oh really, you can build that for me, and like it was, it was wonderful. That's so, really cool. A lot of comedians don't get that kind of, um, that freedom. Y yeah, well, um, because you're in the confines of a, someone's script. Mm -hmm. You know, you have to tell that story. You know? Yeah. But they were gen very generous for me. Sometimes in scripts, like season two and beyond, they, it would say, Dave will come up with something here. Oh, I love that. So they gave me wonderful freedom. So I loved going to work every day. Yeah, I mean, I'm sure yeah. Bob didn't get to make those types of grand well, choices. Well, Bob, Bob was sometimes very frustrated because he had to be the straight man. You know, mm -hmm. he had to be the father. Yeah. You know, he had to be Kermit the Frog, who's, you know, running the ship. And then, you know, Fozzie and Gonzo and everybody else is, you know, going crazy around him. You know? Yeah. And Bob is a was a very extremely funny stand-up. Yeah. I mean, uh, the first time I saw Bob was in Detroit. I was 18. And he just like blew the rafters off this tiny little club that I was performing at. And I said, that's what I want to be. That's what I want to be that good. And that's how good Bob was. And did you talk to him that night? I did. He, I still have the piece of paper where he wrote down his number on a, on a piece of paper at the bar and said, call me. And uh, I called him when I got to Los Angeles and I ended up sleeping on his couch. Look at that. And then in Full House, I moved into Danny Tanner's house and it was like, life imitating art it was crazy yeah that's really cool but you're not getting out of here so fast we okay got one more thing that we're going to do which Please is tell really me what. fun 
we're going to read a little scene from <gasps> Full House. Wonderful. Yeah, because it's time for Aw, oh, Cut It Out. Oh. Cut It Out. Of course, every episode of Full House had a heartfelt scene, and we have cut out a scene from episode eight that we're going to read together, okay? So you got your script. You're going to be playing the part of Danny, and I'll be playing uh, Jesse and Joey. Okay, so ready and action. You know... I don't think that you fell in love with Karina. That takes time. I think maybe you fell in love with being in love. Am I right, Jesse? Well, I do seem to fall in love a lot, but it's just because I'm always hoping this is the one. I just want to meet one nice special girl I could spend my life with. Oh, Jesse, everybody wants that. But you don't have to try so hard. When the right woman comes along, you really will know it. I could have sworn Karina was it. Maybe I did go a little overboard. I guess I was just shocked that she liked me as much as I liked her. Why are you so shocked? Have a little faith in yourself. You're a good guy. As much as I hate to admit it, seems like Karina likes you more than she likes me. God, I hate to admit it. All right, you're not scum. I know that comes from your heart, Jess. Yeah, that was almost semi-touching. I think you got you passed the audition. I did it. <laughs> it always brings a tear to my eye, Aww. those scenes. Uh, Christy, thank you so much for being here. Thank you for your awesome questions. <laughs> thank you. How fun was that, having Christy Carlson Romano here for episode eight? You know, full house videos seem to be everywhere you look on the internet. <laughs> And we like to bring them to you on Full House Rewind. Here, take a look at this one. Yes, Joey and Jesse, what a handsome couple they would be. <laughs> if you got a Full House video you'd like to send us, we'd love to hear from you. Send us the link to your video at fullhouserewind at podcode.us. Here's something interesting about episode eight of Full House. This episode was written by our show creator, Jeff Franklin. It's also the first episode of Full House that Jeff directed. We had probably too much fun when Jeff was directing, but I do remember we goofed around a lot. And Jeff was always such a great sport. He would mostly just, you know, shake his head and laugh. Um, Jeff was our showrunner. So most of his time was spent in the writer's room or dealing with Warner Brothers and ABC. So he loved his time with us on the stage where we got to work through scenes and come up with funny bits in the rehearsal process. Now, at this point during season one, we still didn't know if we would get a pickup for a back nine. Uh, we were just hoping that somehow ABC would give us a chance. We aired on Friday nights at 8 p.m., which meant that there was no show airing before us to give us a lead-in. So at this point, I thought, well, we'll at least do 13 episodes. Maybe I can earn enough money to buy a small house in the San Fernando Valley. You see, we still had to finish four more shows, but the ratings, you know, they weren't very good. All I could think was, you know, Fingers crossed, this will be some great stuff to put on my demo reel. But I still thought to myself, I'm the luckiest guy on the planet. I get to make people laugh on a TV show. Oh, hey, someone's at the door. Hey, Dave. Hey, look, it's my buddy, Mr. Woodchuck. Knock, knock. Who's there? Wooden. Wooden who? Wouldn't you like to know? <laughs> <laughs> It is a very busy day today. Hi, Dave. Hey, Comet, what's going on? Did I hear Kermit the Frog's voice in here? Yeah, he, uh, he left a message on my answering machine. Wow, Dave, you know Kermit the Frog? That's really cool. I'm also friends with Fozzie and Miss Piggy. Really? Yeah. Comet, did you know that I did the voices of the Muppet Babies on the animated series? I got to work with Jim Henson. Oh my gosh, I didn't know that, Dave. Yeah, I, I did the voices of Animal, Bunsen Honeydew, Waldorf and Statler, The Two Old Men in the Balcony, and Bean Bunny. Dave, I love Animal. Can you do Animal's voice? Mm, sure. 
Okay, me eat mud, smear and face. That's great. And how about Waldorf and Statler? Can you do their voices too? Yeah, sure. Um, you know what the best part about this show is? Uh, no, what's that? It ends. <laughs> <laughs> wow, Dave, that's awesome. I'm probably going to stop by every day. Love you, Dave. <laughs> I love you too, Comet. <laughs> Somebody's here. I'll bet it's our neighbor, Granny Tanny. Hello, David. Hi, Granny Tanny. I was watching the show. I didn't know you did the voices of Waldorf and Statler on the Muppet Babies cartoon. Yes, I did. They are very funny characters. Could you set me up with that Waldorf character? He's the cute one. <laughs> sure, I'll, I, I could give him a call. I don't want to start something between them like the Full House Jesse's Girl episode, though, because they'll both fall in love with me. Well, of course they'll fall in love with you, Granny Tanny. I mean, who wouldn't fall in love with you, right? There's a lot to love. You're right. Okay, if I'm going to go on a date with Waldorf, I better go change into my dancing shoes. I am so excited. Bye, David. <laughs> Bye, Granny. You know, I don't mind setting up Granny Tanner with Waldorf. I'll bet they have a great time. You know what? It seems like love is in the air. So let's... Share a hug together, okay? We close every episode of Full House Rewind by giving all of you who need it a hug. So here it is, your Full House hug. Come on, bring it in. Yeah, that's pretty good. That's our show. We'd like to thank our special guest, Christy Carlson Romano, for stopping by. And thank you for listening and watching. You are the heart and soul of Full House Rewind. Now, go out there, share the love. So long. Thank you so much for watching this episode of Full House Rewind. To watch clips from the pod, go check out the Full House Rewind Clips YouTube channel at the link in the description. And we'll see you next week.